Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Jamaican police charge woman for faking kidnap. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday, 11th July, 2022. Details when we return. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Welcome back. Police in Jamaica have charged the 27-year-old woman with extortion and creating public mischief after she is reported to fake her own kidnap while demanding a ransom from her own family. More in this report. It looks like a scene from any lifetime high drama movie. A woman seemingly in distress as someone points a gun to her head. The video could arguably have been enough to scare any family whose relative has been kidnapped. Except it is all fake. The plot twist. According to the police, the woman pretending to be a victim is in fact the perpetrator. In a statement on Wednesday, the police identified the woman as Shamika Miller, a customer service representative from Seaview Gardens. The police said on Monday, July 4, Miss Miller falsely conspired with her accomplices by stating that she was kidnapped while demanding money from her family members for her release. It's further stated that she sent her family members the video footage with a gun pointing at her head, but when her demands were not met, she reported that she was released on Spanish Town Road. The statement said an investigation was launched and it was theorized that the allegation was false. She was arrested and interviewed in the presence of her attorney, after which she was charged. Meanwhile, Jamaica's Minister of Health, Dr. Christopher Tufton, says the patient who tests positive for monkey Parks is expected to make a full recovery while healthcare workers are being prepared to deal with the disease. Jamila Maitland of TVJ News reports. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says the country's healthcare workers have been receiving training on how to identify and treat monkeypox. Early symptoms include fever, headache, muscle ache, and swollen lymph nodes, which is usually followed by a rash of pus like pimples. It lasts between two to four weeks. So I think that we're pretty prepared. And the truth is a lot of the issues around monkeypox in terms of the protocols and so on are similar to COVID. So COVID being more dangerous, actually. So I think we're ready and able to deal with that. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there's no specific treatment for the infections. However, antiviral drugs and vaccines developed to protect against diseases like smallpox may be used to prevent and treat it. Additionally, the CDC says other drugs can be used. It's why Dr. Tufton believes patient zero is expected to make a full recovery. There doesn't seem to be any imminent threat to life. Um, but So the, the, the health system is doing what it needs to do. He's isolated and he's being treated. And the, the chances are that he will recover. And, and we pray for that and hope for that and work for that. Um, the, the fatality rate of monkeypox is, is relatively low globally when you look at the numbers. So I don't anticipate any major unforeseen circumstance. But the World Health Organization says it's concerned about the spread of the once rare disease. WHO's Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus says a meeting has been set for the week of July 18 to determine if monkeypox is a global health emergency. Just days before, on June 27, the same committee declared that it was not. More than 6,000 cases have been detected in 58 countries. Three people have died so far. It's now in 80% of Europe and is spreading throughout the UK, United States and Australia. And as global travel continues to take off due to the decrease in COVID-19 cases, focus is now on monkeypox and the threat it poses to global health. Still, the health minister is urging Jamaicans not to panic. This is not 
an attempt at trying to scaremonger or create panic. But it is a reality that monkeypox or any other such contagious virus or disease is best controlled with information and with personal responsibility in the first instance, not just about what hospitals and doctors can do. Jamila Maitland, TVG News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Bobby, this is Attorney General Deal Marshall warns criminals not to test the resolve of the island's law enforcers as he announced a new security strategy designed to stop the worrying influx of illegal guns into the country. At a news conference at government headquarters today, Marshall served notice that the days of faceless enablers of gun crime who are calling the shots are numbered, even as he assured that while there has been a spike in shootings, authorities are on top of the situation. Marshall admitted the number of illegal firearms is worrying, but disclosed that moves have been made to stem the illicit trade. We have settled on an MOU with certain specialized United States agencies um, to do a number of things uh, which will assist in our mutual ability to deal with the illegal trafficking of firearms. Uh, obviously, you, you've seen in the press a number of, of stories in relation to um, firearm traffickers in the U.S. Uh, we are intent that we are put in a position to be better able to deal with those things in a cross-border way. Um, we're also going to be, as a result of that MOU, uh, looking at increased training of our customs officers. Uh, believe, believe me, we know that the criminal element is extremely resourceful, okay? And there are certain characteristics of, of firearms that, that, they, that they rely on. They know they can be taken apart. They ship them in multiple things. And what is important to us is to make sure that our, our officers, our border protection agencies, are, are fully able to spot them when they see them. Commissioner of Police Richard Boyce made clear that his officers are working around the clock to keep the country safe. He revealed that they have made significant breakthroughs in solving recent shootings, and he told Barbadians that security this crop over will be top-notch. Over time, we have delivered quality policing at those types of events. And we are well-trained, we have the experience, and we can say up front that we were preparing for such events for over time, period of time. So we know where to put our resources, how to go about our planning, what strategies to put in place, and to be there up front before any activity begins. So we will do the necessary environmental scanning, knowing exactly what is happening, and put the resources and the specifics in place to ensure the public that we are on the job, and we are alert, and we are attuned to everything which is happening in terms of providing that high level of quality service and security to members of the public. There could be a significant reduction in electricity costs in Antigua and Barbuda if Venezuela's petro carib oil deal resumes. Prime Minister and Finance Minister Gaston Brown estimates this reduction could be up to 20%. However, he tells ABS News the United States first needs to lift sanctions which have torpedoed the energy pact. ABS's Garfield Burford reports. Prime Minister Brown says efforts have been ongoing to persuade the United States to lift the sanctions, which have crippled the concessionary arrangement started by the late Hugo Chavez in 2005. Antigua and Barbuda has been at the forefront of that fight. Uh, even before I would have stated it publicly, uh, I would have held um, discussions with Vice President um, Kamala Harris to ask him to relax the sanctions so that the petro caribbean ship could resume. Uh, President Maduro would have said to me as well, just as he said to Ralph, that they're willing to resume it, but we want to do so in a sanction-free environment. Uh, so clearly those sanctions are hurting us because as it stands now, we can actually get petroleum products, finished products from Venezuela at 35% of the global cost. And what we would do on the basis we're able to avail ourselves of that opportunity is to pass on the savings um, to our people so that um, we could reduce the price of um, electricity. Uh, so for us, we're pressing real hard. 
I asked the Prime Minister what could be the level of reduction in electricity costs if the Petrocaribe initiative is revived. Clearly, there are several inputs involved here. It's not just petrol. But if we get a 35% reduction in um, the uh, petroleum um, product, that is the heavy fuel, to make the electricity, then I suspect um, maybe you can see probably 15 20% um, reduction in your bill. With motorists also feeling the pinch of rising global energy prices, could Petrocaribe also result in an ease at the pumps as well? If we also get um, finished products um, diesel, then I have to tell you that will be a major uh, success for the, um, the motorists because we can definitely um, drive down the price. All, of course, depends on whether the U.S. would be willing to ease the sanctions on the program to the benefit of the Caribbean. How likely is this, though? What we noted, um, since we made the request, uh, the United States would have provided a carve-out for Europe, as you know. Uh, they're allowing um, Europe to acquire fuel from Venezuela and to do a set-off against the Mount Sword. So we said that on the basis you did it um, for Europe, they are far less vulnerable, uh, far more resilient than we are, then you should be able to do it for the Caribbean. So we expect um, you know, some equity in the decision-making, and we're hoping that as they review uh, that position, that they'll also include a carve-out for the Caribbean region. Hopes in a region chafing under the burden of rising energy costs are clearly fueled. The Bahamas' central bank delivered a somewhat interesting monthly financial report with a specific look at tourism. This year, stellar wins for the tourism industry laid bare in the numbers compiled in the latest Central Bank monthly report. That report pegs total visitor arrivals by first port of entry at 586,574 in April. Certainly a long ways off from the 68,791 visitors in 2021. Behind the outturn, air traffic rose to 145,470 from just 60,305 the year prior. Sea passengers grew exponentially to 441,103 from 2021's 8,486 visitors when voyages were suspended. Now let's look further at major ports of entry. Arrivals to New Providence recovered to 293,182 in April. Compare that to 41,358 the same time last year. Behind the uptick, air traffic reached nearly 110,000, while sea passengers were over 180,000. Over in Grand Bahama, foreign arrivals amounted to 29,282 vis-a-vis a meager 2,690 a year earlier. Now, as for visitors to the family islands, we're looking at over 260,000 from 24 plus thousand. As it relates to the short-term rental market, your DNA data mirrors the positive trends. In May, total room nights sold went straight to 136,311 from 98,387. Hubbard's Motor Department, Mount Gay, and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the building supplies compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived on new shipments of quality furrow and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.